Hi, welcome to the Tish WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. We are pleased to introduce, look, it says TV personality. This guy is so much more than a TV personality. Former ad executive, television host, actor, radio host. He is Donnie Deutsch. How are you, man? Steve, thanks for having I'm me, buddy. I'm Grace. It is a pleasure. An honor to have you. You here. got the nice, crisp Trump like tie today. The, I mean, you look very you, presidential. Why are you going with Trump right away? That's a blue. It really should be Obama, but he's not running. So, I mean, you know, we don't have any guys wearing blue ties running for president. Uh, I noticed that. By the way, we're doing this uh, going into May 2016. We don't want to date ourselves. Real quick. Okay. You're a branding expert. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. You're a branding expert. You know image, you know personality better than anyone else. Donald Trump, three words. Brilliant, uh, scary, um, fascinating. Hillary Clinton, three words. Bright, um, questionable, um, gravitas. I'm not going to ask you to predict because that is not the game we're in here. But I um, will. Go. I actually think Trump's going to win. Not just even the nomination. I, and I actually said this, I do Morning Joe a lot on no, MSNBC, and I said this last week. It hit me, and here's why. Number <clears> one, <throat> you know, let's assume at this point it, 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 it's okay. Trump and Hillary. Um, Trump voters right now, they're sticky. He can, as he said, he can go on Fifth Avenue and kill people, they're not going anywhere. Everybody who's voting by Hillary, they're going, ah, I guess Hillary. You know, so they're not as sticky. Number two, he has set the bar so low as far as Everything he does now, if he just doesn't call into a morning show 10 days in a row, he's presidential. So the first somewhat intelligent policy speech he gives, you know, it's going to be delightful and surprise. Oh, my God. Not only is he this colorful guy who says it like it is. Wow. Maybe he can actually do this job. And he gets points for that. Thirdly, he can go to the left and right of her. You know, he's not stuck to any party platform. So he can go gun control. He can go, you know, uh, abortion rights. He can go waterboarding. He can put a portfolio of issues that in the general election really works. And finally, I think America wants to see the President Trump show. It's as silly the, and as oh, dumb no, as that. Not, no, not, that's what it comes respect. down to. You just call it a show. Yes. It's not a show. But that's the problem. That's the scary. Remember I said not the word show. scary? That's, remember I used the word scary? Yes. That's the scary part. Because the average American is not going deep and going, OK, what really happens if this guy's elected? Um, and the reality is they're like, hey, I, you know what? What the heck? It's all screwed up now, and let's see what that guy can what's do. What's the difference? Well, we do you think there's a fair number of what's the difference voters out there? Like, I, how much difference does it make? I think people are so fed up, and they are so, and the problem is Hillary Clinton, who is imminently qualified, is the status quo. And people want anything but the status wow. quo, even if something doesn't make sense. They're willing to throw it to the wind. Let me ask you this. Because you have been on the air for a while. I'm old. No, you're not. I'm you're, old. you're seasoned and you're still <laughs> grizzled. You're top of your game. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. But the other thing is this you've also helped people and helped companies figure out how to mm -hmm. present themselves in the marketplace. People talk about being authentic. Mm -hmm. I got to work on being authentic, sure. which I find fascinating. You're going to work on being yeah, authentic. Exactly. That's great. Oxymoron. To what extent do you feel the American public truly wants someone to be who he or she actually is? That is the number one thing. When, you, when they do focus groups with Trump, you will have people say, I actually disagree with everything he says, but at least he says it like it is. Even at least he he's says some, I'm sorry Even if I disagree. Yes. Incredibly, forget about disagree. Incredibly offensive. Like the things he said about Muslims, like the things he said about, about Maggie women. Kelly, the things about he, Rosie O'Donnell, on and on about and other on kinds on. of people. It doesn't matter. It, they will say, you know what? That was wrong. But at least there's a guy who says what's on his mind. And, and that's, that's Hillary, what comes out. And sorry for interrupting. They don't think Hillary Clinton is that authentic? It's the opposite. Whereas Hillary Clinton really doesn't offend people, but they just don't believe her. That, she, that she's manufactured, that she's calculated, mm. that she's disingenuous. I'm mm. not saying she is. Mm. That's what comes across. Look, we got a long way to go till November, but this is just fascinating. All right, let's switch gears. Okay. By the way, you can talk to Donnie Deutsch about anything. That's what makes him such a great... Uh, forget about guests. He's just an interesting person. Can we show a clip uh, from, um, from your show? Yeah, the USA I, Network? Tell the kids to turn away and let's show it. Yeah. All right. This is public broadcasting. I'm you know kidding. that we raise the level of discourse. Did you I, know that about I do us? Know, I do know that. Our and President Neil Shapiro requires that we Neil raise Shapiro's the discourse. Good guy. He's the best guy. Yeah. We raise the discourse. So get the kids out of the room. Uh, USA Network show is called Donnie. Just finished the first season. Yes. First season. Uh, listen, this clip, I just saw it before. Get the kids out. Take a look. What are you doing here? It's morning, Jeff. You're never here. Oh, you know, I just missed you. Can I talk to you for a second? Can we go talk? What are you doing? Go, 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 go. What is going on? So, face. 
Look what I got as my daily laugh today. Congratulations, Mr. Dumbbell, you're viral. How did you get that? Do I really have to explain the internet to you? You sent it to someone, some teacher, Miss Echo something, and then she posted it on her Facebook wall, and then people reposted it, and now the world has seen it. Yeah, but she, she likes me. <sighs> Focus. Let me see it, let me see it. I look good, what's the big deal? Okay, remember a few days ago when we did a show about no sexting? Right. Remember that? Uh huh. Okay, well you just sexted the universe. Okay, the premise of the show is? A much more idiotic version of myself, <laughs> which is not hard to do. There's not a big stretch here. I play a daytime talk show, so I have a fictional show on the show called Donnie, uh, where I'm like a Dr. Phil, but a very low-rent Dr. Phil. Um, and I espouse advice on the talk show, and off the talk show, I'm a complete hypocrite doing everything I'm telling people not to do. And it's a real send-up on the media. Um, I play a guy named Donnie Deutsch. Uh, nothing else is real. We use my house, but it's all fictional kids and fictional scenarios, like a Curb Enthusiasm type thing. It's Larry David, but nothing else is real. Not to compare myself, because he's brilliant, and me, not so much. You're having but, fun with this. But it's fun. Oh, Why? Right. Because I'm taking on social issues. It's I'm stretching, and we talked about this before we, we, we got on air, to be able to stretch muscles that you've never done before. Uh, you know, As you graciously said in the introduction, I've done a lot of different things, but to write and create my own scripted comedy is like a dream come true. So. You know, I love flying without a net. You know, I know I can do the next talk show. I know I can run an advertising agency. Yeah, you already made a few bucks, no? Yes, I did, I did okay, I did okay. <laughs> and which gives me the ability to do crazy stuff like this. So it, it's just fun as hell, it really is. Television. Yes. Broadcasting. Yes. The digital piece dramatically changing the landscape. Yeah, you know, look, you, your kids were here before doing, watching yeah. another segment. And if you watch your kids the way they consume, they're just, there's a screen. So to them, there's no difference. It's not television, it's not digital, it's just a mobile device that they watch what they wanna watch on. And so basically the words television, the words broadcasting, the words digital, 20 years from now are not gonna exist. It's just content and how we get it. Just stuff? Stuff, it's just basically, and it's all on demand, you know, not on demand in the sense that we know what cable TV means on demand, but just, you know, I'm gonna watch what I want, how I want, when I want, period, and that's it. And so the watching is one thing, but the listening is another. Serious in your world. Serious XM. What are you laughing for? Because People just, call you, I, I've heard, I listen, I go, P.S. Donnie, everything. Well, this is another example of me doing something that I have no right to be doing. I have a weekly show on uh, Stars 109 called, Sirius called Dial Donnie, Donnie, Donnie on Wednesdays at noon Eastern. And basically for women to call in, for the most part, men can call. But the whole premise of the show is that a lot of women in their life don't have a guy to talk to, that they can, either a guy best friend or a husband they can open up to or a big brother what or a father. Ask, and so I'm that guy who's managed a company with thousands of people, has three daughters, loves women, and I'll give it to you straight about anything, career, parenting, relationships, and it's fun as hell. I'm having the time, and I'm actually good at it. You call yourself a feminist. I am. A, a, my company, my nine of my 11 senior partners were women. Uh, that's what made us so successful. I'll take a woman over a man anytime in business. They're superior. Um, and By the way, sorry for interrupting. Uh, there are nine people in our company. Right. I'm the only guy. Yeah, and that's why, it's, and that's, what, well, that's, that's why it's doing really we got well. a good company. Yeah, that's why it's doing why, well. Why are they better? It's very simple. By the way, we got a lot of guys here. Guys, I'm sorry. No, he, here's the simple. I've actually uh, okay. written a couple books. I have a chapter in one book called The Female Superiority Doctrine that basically, if you watch a Saturday morning TV commercial about a boy or a girl's game, at the end of the commercial for a boy's game, a boy goes, I won. At the end of a girl's game, they're all giggling together. They're collaborative. It's the same thing in business. Every guy, we want to know how big our office is, how big this is, how big our paycheck is. We demand raises where women are more collaborative. They want to do the job. They want to be paid fairly. Mm. We've got to get that right, obviously, because it's still 70 cents on the dollar. Inequity. But there's less of that me, 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 I am Tarzan stuff going on. That makes them better. So if you give me a man, mm. woman, same exact DNA, mm. uh, obviously that's, that's ridiculous to say, but I'll take the woman every time. So I, I, I tell you this before we're talking um, about different things we do. Um, and you've written a lot. Right. This book I wrote called Lessons in Leadership causes me to ask leaders of all stripes. Okay. The biggest leadership lesson they have learned so far, yours is? Um, there are three. Go. Number one, you can't be a great leader unless you're passionate about what you're doing. Surround yourself with people smarter than you um, and show them you care about their success, if much, if not less than your own. The same exact, they will walk through fire. You can't care about their success more than your own, then you're not gonna get there. You can't care about your success more than theirs, they're not gonna follow you. And don't be afraid to fail. Uh, Speaking of the last part, I'm fascinated by this. I'm always fascinated. One of the things about your career that's always struck me is that you try a lot of things and therefore 
Um, it's one thing to talk about the fact that you made a lot of money, but that's not the only measure, right? But what strikes me about you is you just keep coming back. Yeah. And so the idea of rejection or failure, which is a funny word, um, for some people to be like, oh, that's it, I guess. I'm looking at you going, Donnie tries something, doesn't work out a certain way. He just sits there and goes, all right, next. Well, the real like, failure is, is not trying something. You know, yeah. I gave motivational speeches and I do this little bit where I get somebody up on stage and say, okay, go pretend to ask that woman out over there and then sh the guy turns her down. Guess what, you fail. Well, no, you're no worse than you, you're not asked her out. So this TV show I did, let's say it never got on the air. Well, so what? It's no worse than I had not done it. Let's say it just goes one season. Well, that's a home run, I did it, you know? It's a home run. And so it, it's just about trying, like you don't get points, nobody takes away points in life if you just didn't accomplish something. The only points to me is if you don't even try. And I know that sounds so obvious, as long as you're, it's, it's basically, it's the bat, it's, it's RBIs, it's not batting average. So when people say to you, well, quote, if, what if I fail, what do you say to them? Like, you know, I don't wanna try, because what if I fail? You say, that's the failure. I'm not trying. That's the failure. They, by the way, it's a, it's a win-win scenario. If you don't try, you know worse than if you tried and technically failed. So everything you try can only be a win. All the people out there watching right now who say, boy, that Donnie Deutsch, she's, I'm learning a lot from him right now. Biggest lesson about entrepreneurship right now. I want to start that, I, I don't. Biggest lesson, other than try. Um, Put you on the spot. The biggest lesson is you got to keep getting back up. They punch you. You, everybody I talked to, and I had this whole show on CNBC called The Big Idea, and I talked yeah. to everybody from Bill Gates on Val, the whole show was entrepreneurship, and every single one says, had I known what mm -hmm. I didn't know, mm -hmm. I never would have done it. There so it you need that kind of naive sense of why not, and then every time you run into a wall, get back up, get back up, get back up, and that's what I keep doing also. And the other thing, uh, finally, you, you give back to Michael J. Fox Foundation. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, ve I'm very privileged to be on the board, and Michael's a, a good friend, and. What an inspiration, what an incredible guy. I mean, for, for any, most of your viewers, I'm sure I've actually not met him personally. What you see is what you get. The guy actually feels blessed that he has this affliction, that he's got a cause. It's amazing what he's done. He's got a beautiful family. And this is a guy that's gonna change the world. You know, you sometimes do need a face on some of these horrible, horrible diseases, and it has an incredible face. And you're and, committed to this. Well, yeah, any way I can help. And, and so it's just, I'm, I'm love to be involved with it. And it's just, uh, you know, but he, he's incredible, he really is. Tony, thank you. Steve, we're for, a pleasure. For Great, love your show. I, I love everything you do, and uh, we learn every time we listen to you. So I appreciate you spending Thanks, time man. with us. Stay with us, we'll be right back from the Tish WNET studio right here in Manhattan. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Virtua, Wells Fargo, Caldwell University, the New Jersey Education Association, Suez, Johnson & Johnson, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.